Disney Plus just rolled out a big announcement on Wednesday. And it was their release of several uh, Marvel films. I think there's 18 Marvel films. And I think they did a, a Queen concert. And it's being released in IMAX Enhanced DTSX. So, what does that mean for us? What what uh, what do we need to do about that? Well, uh, it, it really means just understanding. Because there's going to be a little bit of panic, I think, initially because there's several pieces of equipment that are left out of the whole DTSX mix uh, for IMAX Enhanced. IMAX Enhanced DTS Mix is really the heart of this because the, the visual component of IMAX Enhanced got released on Disney already. Uh, so that's not anything really new. The question is, what are we going to do about the audio component of this? And do I need to go out and buy new equipment? That kind of stuff. So let's let's talk about what doesn't support uh, IMAX Enhanced DTS-X. And I, I'm saying that very specifically because DTS-X is not the same thing as IMAX Enhanced DTS-X. The IMAX Enhanced DTS-X is also known as Profile 2, DTS-X Profile 2. Um, and it's a different way of processing DTS uh, sound. It's not the exact same as DTS-X. So it's a, what it is is they've down mixed the IMAX sound, which is designed to have basically 12 channels that are full range channels. So every speaker in an IMAX has full range. You don't have to have a frequent, a low frequency effects channel uh, or or the sub channel um, with with IMAX Enhanced. All those speakers, when you go to an IMAX theater, all those speakers are able to handle the full range, including the subwoofer range. And so you don't have big subs in a in an IMAX theater. You just have a really big speaker. So they're they're down down mixing from that 12 channel mix to what they're referring to as a 10 channel mix the 10 channel mix broken down is going to be 5.1.4 so five in the surround 0.1 is your subwoofer and then four in the height so uh i've i've read this i don't know if it's correct i suspect it's not exactly correct i've read that the 5.14 mix if you're if you have an 11 channel setup in your theater for like an 11 11.1 Dolby Atmos mix which would be uh 7.1.4 I've heard that the side surround which is really shocking to me and that's why I doubt this one but the side surrounds are supposed to be getting turned off and you'll get your your rears and you'll still get, have your four heights um, I don't know if that's accurate. I, I suspect something else is going to happen more with that uh, in terms of like a Neural X uh, presentation. So Neural X is where you take something that wasn't designed for DTS-X uh, specifically and you upscale it from like DTS HD master audio that gets upscaled uh, to fit into the DTS-X channel format but right now the just listening to the deep dive uh, it sounds like you're not going to be able to even if you have a DTS X receiver which almost every receiver we sell here at Vassal High End is a DTS X receiver not all of them are going to be able to do DTS X profile 2 or the IMAX enhanced so does that mean you should run out and buy a new receiver? Well, I don't think that's a very smart move. Um, so many of these receivers have uh, firmware updates that are possible, and a lot of this is just going to be a matter of unlocking the firmware uh, and just doing an update. Another part of that uh, is um, when, when you talk about components that can actually bring in, stream in the the IMAX Enhanced DTS-X. That's very limited as well. 
DTS is a Sony proprietary technology. So of course, Sony's going to get the love first, right? Um, so you've got some Sony receivers, uh, you have uh, some Sony uh, televisions, but also there's some Google Android based televisions that are getting that too. So I know Hisense and Sharp, I saw those among the list, but you're, uh, I don't think LG has one. Maybe LG does have a TV that does it. I can't remember. Um, but not every LG TV is doing this yet. Roku's don't do it. Nvidia Shields don't do it. Apple TV Plus, Apple TV 4K doesn't do this. Uh, your Fire Sticks, they don't do this. So many of these, these things that we're used to using for our streaming content don't actually have it. So what's, what's going to be the result? Do we need to go out and buy this stuff right away? I don't think so. I think you're going to see all these apps just have a firmware update. It's going to unlock eventually. So maybe in six months you're going to see this in a lot of a lot of other areas. Um, sound bars. If you're a sound bar person, um, you know when you think about Dolby Atmos from a sound bar, I, it does it work. I mean, does it does it handle the processing? Sure, it does. And the same thing is going to happen with these DTSX uh, IMAX enhanced capable sound bars. It will do the processing. That's not a big deal. But the sound is going to be the sound. You know, if your if your sound bar doesn't have um, great speakers, it's not going to improve the speakers. Uh, if it doesn't have a great amplifier in in it, if it's a standalone in sound bar. It's not going to improve. <laughs> it's not going to improve your amplifier. That's for sure. So, if you want to make make a upgrade on that, uh, sure you can do that. So, we carry Blue Sound sound bars here at the shop, and Blue Sound has not uh, has not become certified with DTS in any way, uh, and they've been out for quite a while. Um, so, you know, when you look at the Blue Sound sound bars, you're like, well, why aren't they they uh, certified with DTS, they're, they're certified with Dolby Atmos. Um, well, first of all, it's their ability to process that makes them so good on top of their incredible amplifier technology and on top of their great speaker drivers. That's why they sound great. It's not because of Dolby Atmos. It's not because of, uh, it won't be because of DTS-X. They have great processing. They have great amplification. They have great, uh, uh, great power source. They, they've got great speakers. That's just they're great. That's that's it. A great soundbar is a great soundbar, regardless of what you put into it. So, will they eventually get that DTSX thing? Well, now that it's it's streaming capable, sure. I think they're probably gonna uh, go for that certification. Hopefully, that doesn't end up raising the price on the. On the soundbar plus from from blue sound but really uh, and and you know those will also work with other speakers in the surround you know great um is that even a true mix not really um it, it's just a it's just a great soundbar that sounds really good um and so uh it's not a true mix what it is is something that is able to decode the true mix and that's that's great um I, the people this probably affects the most right now are the people that have invested heavily into their home theater systems and they've done they've got great av receivers and maybe their av receivers left out um we sell integras we sell we sell onkios uh those are left out but are they going to be left out forever? I don't think so. And does it mean that if it's left out now, it's left out for good? I don't think so either. I, I think a firmware update is going to correct that. It just it's going to be a matter of of just downloading some some uh, firmware, and that that can either happen through a through a USB stick or or go over the network. And I don't think it's going to be that big of a deal. So I'm not too panicked about it. And I think we're going to see a lot of changes probably in the next. Oh, probably next six months. Um, it, it may be a little bit longer, but I don't think six months is going to be too too much of a surprise if it's if it's 
that that soon because Sony wants to make their money uh, and they're not going to make their money by by not getting this technology out to people it, most people are going to just forget it um, if they're not seeing it it's going to be out of sight out of mind what what is the DTS what what's so special about DTS X though I think that's that's probably the big question a lot of people have and I'll and I'll kind of close with this DTS X versus say Dolby Atmos those those two technologies are really the the defining technologies of surround sound um, Dolby Atmos decided to create mixes that were object placement in space so it's spatial surround and you can hear sounds occur from places where there aren't even speakers and that's pretty cool dts x isn't necessarily about the spatial quality that said they still have a lot of spatial qualities that are pretty cool um, i'm really impressed with dts master audio hd master audio like a recording from like 2000 U U five seven one great film. It's got some range. They're dropping depth charges into the water. Things are exploding. It's great. Um, that film, when you watch it on a Blu-ray, and it goes into an AV receiver that has DTS X processing, it won't read it as DTS X, but it will upscale it into something like DTS X, and they refer to it as DTS Neural X. And so it's it's just an upscale version of that. Well, that's because DTS is backwards compatible basically at every level, and that's another cool thing. But they but they didn't do that with DTS X Profile Two. That's not a backwards compatibility thing. Uh, so that's that's probably the biggest issue. But it, w once again, I think there's going to be a firmware update that's going to correct that. Um, so. What is, what does this mean? So, or back to DTS uh, processing. DTS is special versus uh, Dolby in that it has higher bit rates. It just it has more information in it, um, and it's less compressed. So you're going to hear a bigger dynamic range instead of uh, a dynamic range that the softs are here and the louds are here. You're going to see those expand. Uh, or you're going to hear those expand. And so your louds are going to be louder, your softs are going to be softer. And that's one of the special things about DTS uh, that people really love. Audiophiles love DTS um, just because there's a little bit more detail in the sound. But you do lose some of the spatial aspects of that. And if they're actually going to turn off your side channels in a, in a uh, 5.1.4 uh, mix that's being in a that's actually in a theater that's 7.1.4 I think they're gonna make a lot of people mad uh, I think uh, so what I would suspect is going to happen is that it's going to turn that into a neural X as well so um, again it's it's not a big deal uh, it's a big deal but it's not a big deal I think it's going to be a bigger deal here in a year or two if these receivers aren't getting upgrades and, and aren't getting firmware updates but right now I wouldn't panic about it um, and just you might you might raise a little stink with your with your uh, AV receivers uh, manufacturer you might raise a little stink and say hey when well, we're gonna see it see an update so that we can we can get this Roku's are going to get an update Roku's are uh, your your 4k Roku's um, your NVIDIA Shields, they already have DTS-X technology built in. They can handle DTS-X. It's a matter of, you know, Disney Plus releasing an app on those platforms that unlocks it. That's it. That's all it is. It's not a, it's really not a big deal. Uh, it's a firmware update and it'll happen. And if, and if you can firmware update that, you can firmware update an, an AV receiver. That's, that's kind of my opinion. So that's kind of the 
the version that doesn't require you to watch an hour long video. So I hope a 15, 16 minute condensed version helps you out on this. Uh, please contact Vassal High End, uh, 417-434-5049. If you have any uh, questions, you just want to discuss a little bit further, you need a little bit deeper understanding. I'm a huge fan of DTSX. Uh, I think it sounds great. Uh, obviously I haven't heard the DTS X profile two yet. So I'm, I suspect it's going to sound awfully good, but you got to realize that that was designed for, for streaming. So it's a compressed version of DTS X. Um, it's not, it, it is not what the, we audio files refer to as a lossless audio codec. It's actually compressed. It's a lossy file. It loses information. Um, but the nice thing is it's, Losing information from an IMAX, uh, an IMAX recording. So there's a lot of information that could probably be lost, and you're not gonna notice a whole lot. So um, anyway, but it is compressed. So we'll see how all that goes. Certainly, a hard copy of any disc you're gonna watch, uh, of any movie you're gonna watch, a, a, a HD Blu-ray. Uh, uh, UHD ultra high definition Blu-ray on an ultra high definition Blu-ray player that has DTS X is going to outperform a Disney version of that. That's, that's, that's streaming. It just will. Um, it, it's just better. It just is. So, uh, because you, you have a lossless audio codec, uh, entering your, your machine. So anyway, that's long and short. Sorry. we got almost 18 minutes here. You guys have a great day, and once again, give me a call if you have any questions or you just want to discuss it and talk, talk your way through it. Be good, guys.